Hey guys, it's Ben, and today I'm going to be doing a live walkthrough of the Return Hank the Box Challenge. So, let's first of all, I've got the IP, I've got the box, I'm running, let's check if I can ping it. Uh, ping. There we go. And we are getting pings back, the box is up and running, so we can do an MLAP scan. I have already done this, so let's, um, and I've also set up a directory um, struct for us, just so I can keep myself organised. Let's go into the recon directory. And it's in nmap and cap full thorough. So the command I will quickly run over what I've done. Tac P, tac P, all ports. Tac SV for services, version enumeration. Tac SV for SC for default scripts. Tac T4 um, for a bit faster output. Tac PN to not send ping, just to make it a bit faster. Uh, tac N to not do DNS resolution. And Tac O to output to full thorough. We can see. There are quite a few ports open. I do notice port 88 Kerberos is open, which is a big indication that this is a domain controller we're looking at. This IP um, is a domain controller. We also see LDAP, which is also common on DCs. Um, but we do see there's a website, um, HTTP um, and HTTP printer admin panel. You don't often see those on domain controllers. That stood out to me. Uh, so let's have a look what this actually is. Let's go to HTTP and we can see this is the hack the box printer admin panel. Um, let's have a look around. This goes to index.php, which is where I am. There's this fax which I'm hovering over and I can see in the bottom left hand corner doesn't do anything. And the same with the troubleshooting. However, the settings is a valid endpoint. Let's click on this and we can see this looks like some sort of printer settings where we would set a, um, a server port which is 389, um, a server address printer.return.local and a username S SVC printer and a password. Sometimes if passwords use this like characters to hide it you, you can sometimes inspect and change this if it like autofills it out but you can see it's genuinely the value of this. So there's nothing interesting in the password. However, this does look interesting. Server port uh, 389, this is LDAP. So maybe there's some LDAP authentication going on something. When you uh, click update it, it tries to connect to pr printer.return.local um, and authenticates with LDAP. So what I did was I changed this IP at the moment. It's, it's actually before I do that, let's just add return.local to our Etsy host file. Um, and I'll zoom out a bit. Uh, sudo bi Etsy hosts Kali. Um, you can see I've already added it, but there we go. There we go. So let's change this to our IP here. And return. And let's see what happens now. If we update this, it doesn't do anything, it goes back to the old one. Okay, what about if we listen port 389 now? So let's go NVLP port 389 and let's split this up a bit. I'm gonna make a vi notes.txt where I can just sort the findings and let's try this again. Does this I've got to run? Let's listen again and let's try again. 10, 10, 14, 10. Update this. Go back here and we can see, look, there is some result. Um, instead of doing uh, a netcat to listen in, you could use Responder, which is another alternative. So let's just do that as well, just to show you it's probably a bit neater output. Let's go sudo Responder. Um, the interface is the ton zero. VPN. Let's get that listening. We can see LDAP is enabled. Let's try this again and let's see what we find here. 10, 10, 14, 10. And when we do this, we see skipping previously. Okay, so I've done this before. It's not going to show um, that again. However, if we did this, like on the NCAT, we can get the credentials. We could also do it here. Because I've previously used um, Responder, it 
it's not showing the credentials again, which is fine. Let's just get this. And the address is in use because Responder is using it. There we go. It's listening. And I'm 10, 10, 14, 10. Run. And we've, we've got this username here, return um, in the domain. And then there's this SVC printer, which is similar to the username we saw. It's the same as the username we saw here. So I can say, look, that's going to be our username, I guess, SVC printer. And the password, I'm guessing, is this down here. So let's paste that there. Let's check if these are valid credentials, right? Let's cat notes. And what I'm going to do is use crack map exec just to test if these are valid credentials. So let's do this crack uh, map exec SMB on um, return.local. Uh, the username is SVC printer uh, and the password is this here. Have I got it saved? I do. Let's see what happens when we try this. And we can see, look, these are valid credentials, right? These work. So you could do some more SMB enumeration. You may at this point want to go back to the, um, the recon nmap scan and cat. So we didn't actually go through all the ports. We we looked, we saw there was port 80 open, I investigated it, and now I've got some credentials. Let's carry on and see what other ports are open. You may notice there is port 5985, which is WinRM, Win um, Remoting. This basically um, can allow you to get remote PowerShell shell, um, a PowerShell shell, um, if this is enabled, if this port is open, and if this user is set up for it. So let's try this. Let's you can also do this on WinRM, WinRM, and we can see, look, yes, that's all good. We can do this. The, um, the command you can use to get a shell with WinRM in Linux is evil WinRM. Evil WinRM. The I, our IP, you put the IP there, you put the domain return.local. The user is this SVC printer. Um, and the password is the password we captured from listening on LDAP. So let's try this and see what happens. Um, that is not what I wanted to do, but I think if I just go like this, evil win RM, there we go. And we can see, look, we have got a shell. We've got a shell, we can run commands, we've got remote code execution. So let's go into the desktop and we can see that the flag is there, the user.txt flag is there. So we've, we've, we've got the first flag, I'm not going to spoil the flag, I'm not going to open that now. Um, but the next goal is to privilege escalate. We want to get administrator privileges. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look at this. First of all, let's have a look at our privileges in more detail. Let's go who am I, forward slash priv, and we can see we've got a lot. A lot which are enabled. I would typically looking um, typically when I compromise a, a service account, um, they often have some sort of impersonate token, SE impersonate token privilege, something like that. We can see this user doesn't. However, this user does have SE backup and SE SE restore. These two are privileges which basically allow us access to the whole file system. That's it's quite powerful, right? We can um, we can read any file, which also means we could read the root.txt file, and that is possible. You can do that. Um, I will demonstrate that. Um, although I'm not going to stop there, I am going to get a shell, um, and I'll show you some other stuff we can read or we can attempt to read. Anyway, there's a there's a tool um, which allows us to take advantage of this privilege. I've got it stored in here. Let me uh, privesc. Go. It's called ACL full control. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this file. Let's copy opt psc bishop privesc ACL full control. I'm going to copy that here. Nice. Um, and now I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to go into picture somewhere unsuspecting. And I'm going to upload this ACL full control.
Pro no, PS1. We can see that is now there. I'm going to import module ACL full ACL full control ps one this basically allows us to easily change um, our permissions and let's just have a look at this script um, we can see the syntax there's the user which is us and a path which is supplied so for example there's this user here in the path and then if you have this se backup privilege you can change the permission so first of all before I actually run this let's just see the into uh, users administrator and desktop. And there is this root.txt. Can I type this? We get permission denied. Okay. Um, now let's go back to this AC uh, control. We have imported it, right? We've imported this module. Um, so we can go AC full, full control, the user, me. So we we'll return. SVC printer. Um, the path is C users administrator. Administrator. I just want to give access to all of that. And it says the ACLs have changed successfully. We can see SVC now has full control over this. So I should be able to type root.txt. We can see that does work. I'm going to, um, that does work. I'll probably blur that out. Um, but yeah, we we can get the root flag. However, that takes the fun out of it. We're still not shell. We've still, sorry, we've st still not got an administrator shell. We're still at this fairly low privilege. We've got, we, we're not the lowest of low, but we're not administrator. We, we don't have that NT system. That's what we're, we're looking for. So another idea is go to the ntds.dit database and just copy that locally right because that contains the hashes of all users on this domain um, so it would be good if we could copy this right let's try copy ntds.dit and what I will do is I'll set up a SMB server so let's uh, make directory SMB CD SMB uh, in packet SMB server SMB2 support Call the share get here. There we go. And yeah, let's copy ntds.dit um, to 10, 10, 40, 10, share ntds.dit. And we can see we've got permission denied, right? So how about if we use this again and Windows NTDS, give ourselves permissions over that. So what happens now, I try to do it. So it's currently being used by another process. This file is so important in the Active Directory environment. It's the base that it, it contains all the information about the users. Um, it's constantly used for authentication. So it's always in use. There's always process using it. So we can never copy this. We always get that issue. So that's what I originally tried and it didn't work. Um, I, then decided to dig a bit deeper into my current user because when you go who am I, sorry, who am I, priv, this is a lot of privileges. You don't usually see this many privileges, especially when they're all enabled. So let, let's investigate the current user, which is SVC printer, and let's see if we're in, in part of that. Let's see what groups we're in. We can see we're part of this server operators group. Um, I figured out this server operators group has the ability to start, stop, and edit any services which are running on the machine. And that includes services which are running as a user with higher privileges privileges than me. So see services. We could Google around, do some investigation. A few of these services will have higher privileges. Um, the one I used is VM Tools. Um, and what we can basically do, um, first, I'm going to go into my privilege escalation directory. I'm going to locate netcat.exe. There we go. Let's just let's copy this. 
let's copy this here, and now uh, we should have this. Um, and then what directory I'm in here, so let's try cd users at cd service printer. I was working in here, wasn't I? Yes. So let's try upload pe uh, netcat.exe. And we've got the netcat binary here. I'm going to go on this side and get a, a reverse shell listener going. NVLP 444. I've got a reverse shell listener going. And what I said is this, um, this server operators group, members of this group, have the ability to edit any service on the system. I did some enumeration. I found some services and I targeted this one here, the VM tools one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, set the path, the binary path, to when this service runs, it's going to run a netcat reverse shell. So let, let's do this. So it's sc.exe, um, that's the services binary, and vm tools. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bin path to be equal to c users svc printer pictures uh, and then it's netcat.exe which I uploaded. Uh, the command I want to run with this is tacecmd.exe to get a command shell and the IP I'm calling back to um, is my own IP 10.14.10 or I'm listening on is 444. So I believe that's, that's good. It says there's a success. That's updated the config. So I can now se stop VM tools, stop VM tools, and we can see it stopped. And now let's go up and start it. Start, and we can see we've got a shell here. Who am I? Running as NT authority system. So I can now go C users, CD administrator, and CD desktop. Type root.txt. So there we go. We've actually privileged escalated to administrator we've got a shell so you could have taken the easy route just got the root flag and say yeah that's fine or like i did you could properly escalate to root so there we go um i hope you've enjoyed this challenge and i'll see you on the next one